In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Microsoft Excel for my travel planning. Uh, if you follow me, you might recall I did a video a while back on how I use Excel for travel planning. So I actually use both. I've just never shared the uh, Word templates that I use because over the past couple of years, I've been perfecting and tweaking it. And I wasn't quite ready to show you guys until I was like 100% happy with it. So for Excel, um, you probably remember I had a calendar template and I would put in each day like the gist of what I'm doing. So for example, a day trip to Neuschwanstein, probably pronounced that wrong, but you know what I mean? It's a pretty famous castle. Um, but I need more details. So like I need to know, you know, what train number to catch, what time do I need to get up, how are the directions to get to the train station from the hotel, the directions to get to the castle from the hotel, what's the entry fee, do I need to pay in cash, do I need to pre-reserve the ticket, should I go there myself, should I get a pre, you know, I done itinerary like a bus tour thing through Viator, you know what I mean, like there's so many details to plan and I was just dumping links, it was just getting really messy all in Excel, so that's when I turned to Microsoft Word. So why I do it in Microsoft Word? I have all of my research in here, all the details, all organized nice and neatly, and then I keep Excel for an overview summary of the itinerary, and that's also where I keep track of like attraction opening hours, the budget, flight comparison, accommodation, etc. Um, but the actual itinerary, I keep in Word. The reason I use Word is because I actually print this out and then I bind it with my binding machine, and then each day I just rip out the page for that day's itinerary, like this one here. Um, and then I can just take that with me. I'm not carrying around a whole giant itinerary. It's all super detailed, broken out. I will show a bit more of this later, but you can have like a skim now of the kind of the level of detail that I do. If you're watching this going, oh my God, this chick is crazy. Look how detailed it is. Yes, it is detailed, as you've probably picked up on by now. I am not a spontaneous person. I like to plan things in detail. This is when I was talking about earlier with the castle. Um, I like it in detail. And you might think that taking like the fun out of travel, well, people travel differently and fun for me is stress-free because I have already researched everything. Everything is super detailed with all the directions. I'm not rocking up to the train station going, well, which train am I getting? Like I already know because I've done the research. I know how much it's going to cost. I know if I need to pay cash. I know how to pay if I need to go to a service desk or buy a ticket machine. It's just so much less stressful. And I've never, ever come back from a trip and thought, you know, I'm disappointed I didn't get to go see this or I went to that attraction but it was shut that day because I didn't plan my itinerary and check the opening hours or you know the weather was was bad that day because I couldn't switch it because I did something another day and it's just it's so much better if I just have a detailed itinerary and then it's just everything runs smoother and I never miss out on anything I'm always there at the attraction first I get like good photos I just it totally works for me if it doesn't that's cool but for me this is how I do it so if you're interested let's go okay first things first cover page then we have the contents now I did just do a little snippet of the itinerary that I did um, for my previous Europe trip which was about six weeks and that one uh, I figured I'd get some judgment even more so than already so this little snippet is 20 pages I'm not going to tell you how much the actual itinerary was it was more than 100 though so we'll just leave it at that Anyway, so this one here, it will automatically update the more days that you add because it's all linked. If you go right click update field and hit OK. And then after the itinerary uh, contents, which comes in handy when you're actually traveling and you want to like find something quickly, especially this like good to know stuff. And we go into the important info section. So I won't read out all of this stuff. I figure you can just read it while I'm talking. So how I do my travel planning. I love reading lots of blogs, watching YouTube videos, um, going to like transport websites getting down the train numbers and timetables and all that sort of stuff. And it was getting really messy because I would just dump the links in Excel like way back years ago. And I was like, no, nah, I need to organize this better. So that's when I turned to Word. This is where I dump all that kind of stuff in here. And also, it's not only just like for myself, because when I come back from a trip, all my colleagues, you know, you've gone for so long, they're like, oh, what'd you do? What'd you see? Oh, I want to go there too. And then you go, well, here's all of my research. If you want to plan this trip, this is the stuff that I found helpful. So you can get an idea of maybe what you want to do when you go. So it's also helpful from that perspective. And if you have a travel blog and you want to like store all this helpful info to share it with them when you write the post, when you come back, that's another good reason to do this as well. Um, so we won't go through all of this sort of stuff, but I check, you know, like national holidays, check the weather, like the temperatures and just other things that I think are important for travel planning. You might not be as detailed, but that's the kind of stuff that I will look up. And then we go into each country. So I number the country or if you're going, if your whole trip is like Germany, maybe you have, you know, one thing for Berlin, one for Munich, etc. as like a cover page. And it's also easier um, to do it like this, nice and simple, because then when I print it out and I'm flicking through, it's pretty clear this is the divider page because it's just completely white, whereas everything else has text on it. So I find it easier to find what I'm looking for without having to add tabs. 
Then we go into the more detail by each destination. So if you're going to Europe, you'll know there's different like power plugs, different currencies, obviously different temperature. It varies a lot. There's a lot to see. So for each country, I break it down. I do a research dump. Now, this is very, very summarized. Normally, this would be like a couple of pages. I'll dump all the different like tours when I'm comparing them. So like this was the one tour that I ended up picking that I had about 10 here that I was comparing. Um, anything that I'm researching for that country, I will dump it in here and I keep that country specific. So if I go to this blank template, which is what you would get if you opt to um, download these templates that I've made. So you can see here. I've got like second destination and then the same thing again and then you can jump to your third destination you can add as many destinations and days as you want that's just my example pre set up for you and this is the kind of stuff that I record which I find is handy when I'm on the trip so currency conversion how much is your currency getting in the currency of your destination good things to know particularly temperature so you know how to dress major department stores supermarkets um, ATMs and banks Tipping and toilets, toilet location and etiquette and all that kind of stuff, especially if it's in a different language or your visa, all that kind of stuff, um, especially if you're doing a multi-country trip. Maybe if your entire trip was just in Germany, you wouldn't need as much because you're just, you know, going to the same country. But anyway, that gives you an idea. That's the kind of thing that I would do for each country that I'm going to. Then I go into the food, which is obviously, oops, quite exciting. Zoomed in a bit too much there. So I like to put down the foods to try like things that that country is known for um, these by the way are really gross and dry and stale don't recommend them if you're going to Germany and then I also note if breakfast is or isn't included with the hotel because you know sometimes I want to have breakfast like at a place outside of the hotel you know if they don't provide it if I know I'm going to be out for the whole day or maybe I'll just like skip it and it's just fine it's helpful if it is or isn't included to just note that down here and also when you're checking in, sometimes they'll be like, breakfast isn't included. And you'll be like, oh, I thought it was. And then you can just refer to this and then you know if it was or wasn't. Anywho, getting sidetracked. So then I also list out all the food places that I want to go to. So you could put super detailed, like all the um, address and everything. But I normally would just type this into Google Maps when I'm on the trip. So that's why it is a bit like condensed. And then I have ones that are near the hotel or ones that are near the drop-off point for for day tours, like convenient because you usually get back from them late, so you want something close by, not wandering around hungry. So that's why I put that in there. Sometimes I put a link to the menu and the thing that I want to eat there because sometimes I'll be like, oh, tonight I want like a schnitzel. Okay, well, this place has it. Let's go there. And then obviously priorities if you're in Europe, gelato. <laughs> I always put the gelato shops and like chocolate shops in there. So that's what that section's for. You don't have to use it, but I think it's an essential section. And we go into the common phrases. So... I know a lot of stuff is translated into English these days, but some stuff it's just handy to know, like entry and exit, for example. And some things um, that are really difficult to pronounce, like, excuse me, obviously you want to say that, but man, I look at that and I'm, the way I would say it, it's completely different to how it's pronounced. So I'll go into Google Pronounce and then I will write what I think it sounds like. As you can see, it doesn't always match what the uh, spelling is. And then for ones like this, I'm just not even going to bother because it's just too hard to say. And then, yeah, so that's my sort of like quick reference for um, common phrases. So you could review this in the airport, you know, while you're waiting to go to your next destination, um, up to you. Then we go into the actual itinerary for each section. So I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. I've done one where I have a walking route. Let's do that because it's interesting. So I did another video where I showed how I use uh, Google Maps for plotting an itinerary. So this is why... Uh, I do it so it's a lot clearer in my opinion to have it plotted out like this so the purple is where I'm going to be walking these are where all like the little photo stops are and I probably won't like look at this you know super thoroughly like oh my god constantly staring at this map while I'm on the trip it just gives me an idea and if you like wandering off somewhere or you wander up a side street because it looks interesting you can kind of like get back to what you wanted to see so you're not like missing out on anything um, so yeah, I just find it helpful to do a little walking map. I'll include the tutorial if you want to make one of these down below. And I just use the snipping tool and then drop it into my uh, Word doc in there. So as you can see, I go morning, afternoon, evening. And now it's not, you know, set in stone that you stick to these times. But I mean, if you want to fit everything in, well, you kind of have to have an idea of what you want to do when. You can't just go, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. And I don't actually know how much time we're going to spend there, but I know I want to go there and there. And you might find you might actually not have enough time in the day to do all of those things. So that's why I plan out in detail. And then I know exactly how many days I need in each destination. And that's the kind of detail that I will do. I'll go, okay, around 8, 8.30, we're going to do this. 
you know, we need to be here at this time because the ferry leaves then, all that kind of stuff. So I will list it out like this. And some days, um, if it's not as straightforward or if you're in a, a huge place where it's really like confusing, stuff like that, I will put more detail with like train times, etc. And also the other thing you could do, you could have a photo page for your divider if you want something a bit more interesting. So for Finland, you know, put a picture of Helsinki in there. Okay, so let's go back to do some other pages. So this one here. Now, I don't always do things um, like myself. So if, I, if I can, I will take a train and go like to a day trip myself. But sometimes it's just not feasible or it can take too long, in which case I will join a day tour. So after I've done all the research and I've picked the day tour, then I'll put the details in here. So it was this tour. And then I'll put, you know, what the pickup time is, where the pickup location is, all that kind of stuff. And then something like this where you have a big stop at like the main attraction, I find these tours never give you enough time. So I like to plan out, yes, I even plan out what I want to do in those four hours at that destination. So I scheduled everything out for my four hours at Neuschwanstein. And this actually worked really well. I pretty much stuck to this to a T and I fit in everything. So it was great. So that's why I plan it out in detail like that. And then you just got like evening section. And I also put what accommodation we're at that night because sometimes you might move locations. So you might be in like a city location and then you might move out of the town if you want like a little taste test of the country or whatever at the same destination. So that's why I just put the accommodation and also note if it's prepaid or not because it's a bit awkward at checking when you have an argument with someone. You're like, yeah, it's prepaid. And they're like, no, it's not. And it's like mm, awkward. You're like, did you or didn't you? Because you've gone to so many destinations and you forget if you did actually pay it or not. Anyway, let's go to a different day. So this one here, I note if I can swap the day. So if it's an itinerary that I'm doing myself where I'm not joining a day tour, like I can go on my own schedule, I'll note if I can swap the day. And that particularly comes in handy if there is a change in weather. So this itinerary is good for a sunny day. It's not going to be really good for a rainy day because I'm going to be outdoors a lot. So that's why I put a note, swap the day. And maybe you might decide... Um, you know, oh, it's this destination's been way busier than you thought. You don't want to do this star attraction on a Saturday, but you've got something else that you can switch it to, which is a Wednesday. Great, let's switch those days around. So that's why I put a note in there about that. Then in the morning, um, all the itinerary plans, and I've got, okay, this is the opening hours for this, because remember this seasonal opening hours. So I record that, and then I record the entry fee, and I've got this with me, and I go, okay, I need to get six euro cash out, and you can get that out while you're waiting in the queue. There's not like faffing about. It's a lot more efficient if you have it all written down, I find anyway. Public transport. So I'm extremely directionally challenged. I am known to get on a train going in the wrong direction, hence why I plan it down in super detail like this. And I always put the number of stops, how long it should take. And particularly if you're running low on your battery and you don't want to have the little dot to move, which chews up a lot of battery, then you can like count the stops yourself and you already know how many stops it is because you've written it in your itinerary. So that's just why I add that in there if you're thinking it's excessive. Uh, phone batteries don't last forever, so I just like to have this as a backup. And sometimes the destination and like the stops will be in a foreign language when you're on the public transport or you can't understand what they're saying. So again, I just like to have that in there so I can count the stops myself. Then we have, sometimes I'll put in if we have time and then, you know, not a must do because sometimes things will take less time than you think. So I just like to add some extra stuff in if you want to squeeze it in. And then we've got all the plans for the afternoon. I put in photo stops. I put rough time for lunches and where we want to go. And then from that lunch place, the closest subway destination, station, whatever, are uh, here. And then these are some of the things that you want to see. So that's why I split it out like this. And then like sunset in particular, if you don't want to be at a destination um, at night or if you want to go to an observation viewpoint and see it all lit up at night or you want to know that you're going to be going there at night time so you can see the night view that you want to go for. So that's why I record sunset times in there. And let's go back again. So this one here, this was another day trip, which again, I mapped out what we were going to do. I didn't do it as heavily scheduled as the Neuschwanstein uh, day trip, but I did just put a few things in here. Like this one's 250 euro. This is how long I think we'll need here. So that gave like a rough idea. And then some other things if we had time. And the other one I wanted to show you is if I'm doing a day trip on the train, I always try and do a screenshot of the uh, like train schedules. And then if you um, can't figure out how to use the like ticket machine, you can go to the information desk and be like, this is exactly what I want. Um, you know, cause you looked it up online and they can go, yep, cool, here you go, here's your ticket. And it's just no, you know, faffing about. 
and it's a lot easier to show someone like something written on paper and they might be able to go out back and like get their manager who can speak English rather than you trying to tell it to them in English when they can't even like understand English. It's just so much easier. I think if you have like a piece of paper, you can just hand them and they can go find someone that speaks English. It's just a lot easier, I find. So I've got that all split out. Um, we need to get the Bayern ticket with this amount for both of us. This is when you can start using it from, you know, so you don't unnecessarily get there early or think, oh, I want to add this in. But there's no point because you need to wait until nine o'clock for the ticket. So, you know, you may as well like sleep in all that kind of stuff. Again, some people are probably watching this going, holy shit, this is like, whoa, super detailed, um, excessive. To each their own, <laughs> this is what I like to do. For me, it works really well. I always have a great time on my trip, so up to you. I like to plan things in this level of detail. You don't have to, but I'm giving you an idea of what I do. You might want to adopt some of it, maybe not, up to you. Um, I do a screenshot of helpful things, like this one had the rough uh, walking times from the palace so if uh, you know the boat's running late or something happens and then it breaks down and there's like a different one and then it's like 10 minutes behind what my schedule was here i can go okay do i like dawdle and do some photo stops or do we rush and get there in time the next tour time all that kind of stuff so i find that's helpful to do a little screenshot and particularly opening hours are like major major put that in there especially when you're going on the cusp of changing um seasons definitely put the opening hours in there um, otherwise, I have been caught out before where I didn't record it in Word Doc, like way back when. Um, and I got caught out and then the times it was like everything was thrown out because the opening hours were all wrong. So that's why I record it. Then we have the train directions, gain number of stops, all that kind of stuff. Do a screenshot. And then again, you can just take this to the person at the counter in the train station and say, you know, I want this train here. And you know you're not getting ripped off because you've got the price online of what it should be. And the return train. This worked out to be cheapest, that's why I want the band ticket, all that kind of stuff. And I figure you already got the gist of it by now. Just another one where I had different things in there, had a URL link where it gave you like some extra tips, all that kind of stuff. Reminders, so I'm so bad at having to hand wash clothes, I always forget, so reminder, don't forget to wash them. Um, if you want to ring home, the time zone difference. So if it's like a Saturday, usually that works better because, you know, both people are like on the weekend, not someone at work while you're on holiday trying to ring them. So that's why I put that in there. So that is how I do my itinerary. So if you want to look at an uncluttered one, it just looks like this. And I have given suggestions of what to put in each section to kind of like guide you if you don't want to sit here and listen to my rambling, which has gotten quite long. at like 18 minutes. If you don't want to listen to me talking again, you can just have a look at the um, instructions that I've included in here. I've got a blank template where you can just populate it all and then yeah just reminders and a bit of structure. So I hope you found this um, video somewhat helpful and that you find the itinerary template helpful. I found it to be such a huge huge help on the trip. So convenient. Just pull out this page, take it with me. At the end of the day put it in the bin, don't need to carry it anymore, don't have to lug my whole itinerary around with me, everything's organised, I can easily find, you know, all directions and not running around lost or having to ask people, which I really feel, I feel uncomfortable doing that, I feel like I'm like annoying them, so I'd rather just have all the info so I know, so that's how I travel plan, hope you found it helpful, I'll have the link down below if you want to um, get a copy of my template.